Last bit, and this comes to how deadlifting is so different from snatches and cleans, right? The position of your thoracic vertebrae, or essentially your rib cage at the back, is complete opposite if you're trying to be super powerful here to if you're trying to be super powerful here, all right? If that back is really flat, it puts you in a very strong position to be here and to then extend really strong and get that up or get that up, right? If we only want to get it to the waist, you do yourself a big disservice by staying extended. And there's going to be a big one for you guys to untrain yourselves to do if you want to be good at deadlifts, right? So what you like to do is really flat here and like, you almost like scoop your upper back. I'm sure I'm not even demonstrating it very well. Yeah, I can't really do it. <laughs> um, but think about the range of motion that you're losing if you stay very straight and upright versus if you take your chest and you point your chest to the ground, okay? Watch where my hands go, where I'm straight here, and all I change is my position of my back, and I bring myself all the way down, okay? So you all actually travel about that much too far to get down to the bar. It changes a lot of the mechanics of the movement, because you gotta make a lot of compensations. And for me, since I'm not used to doing it, the only place that I can compensate is with my low back, right? In which case, obviously, you're not in a powerful position, okay? So, I want you just standing, try, imagine you're Iron Man, you got that orb in your chest, I want you to work on, point that to the sky, point that to the ground, okay? Almost think, cave your chest in, okay? There's a second bit to this, where your shoulder blades, we love to think shoulder blades back and down, okay? When it comes to deadlifting, not, not the case, okay? Again, shoulder blades back, deadlifting, look at this range that we're losing. If you bring those forward, much better, okay? Shoulder blades rolled forward, chest is caved. One, it's not unsafe, I promise you. Two, when you have to bring your shoulders back, actually, to be honest, cross series, you don't have to. And it's not a knock at all, but you'll get down calls when you're here, okay? But if you do ever have to bring your shoulder blades back, you're doing it where the moment's arm or the force that the muscle has to resist against is virtually zero, okay? Because it's right up against you. And so then all you have to do is just stand up that little bit extra, okay? So, two thoughts. When we're here, cave the chest, point the chest to the ground, okay? And we're here, right? Then from here, you can go there, no problem. You guys don't really have to, yeah? You have to. <laughs> Rana, Rana will be angry. <laughs> all right, does that make sense? Do we have initial... What's the, what's the question? Okay, so my question is, how then do you effectively engage, like my cue for engaging my lats is shoulders uh -huh. back and down to make sure. Love the question. Yeah. Where do lats originate? Inside the body. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Okay, lats, I need a volunteer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to come over here? Do you want to help everyone? I guess. Right, turn yourself around. Lats, come from here, right? Big muscle, they come up here. Where do we think that they attach? Nope. Not in the back? In the nope. Back the okay. Nope. They attach to the front of the arm. The function of the lats is a couple of things. One is, that's good, thank you. <laughs> One is to bring the arm down into the body, which is why I like lat pull downs, pull ups, all that's going to work your lats. But since they originate on the front of your shoulder, another function that they have is to internally rotate the arm. Okay, so if we're then thinking shortening the distance from the front of the shoulder to the low back, the best way to do that is internally rotate the arm and pull the shoulder down, right? A good, a good little exercise is if you, if you grab a band from up there and you supinate and you go here and you think, what am I working? You're gonna feel some lap, sure, but you're gonna feel a lot of tricep, and you're gonna feel a lot of your mid upper back, yeah? If you then take the band here, and you pull down, you'll like, you, you get a lat cramp so quickly, yeah? So it'll take some neural, neural priming, even though that's best in theory. If you haven't done it for a while, you're not just gonna feel it today. But in terms of lats, you're thinking pull that into the body. The best exercise if you can't feel your lats very well, which by the way, lats are a really strong core muscle because they're a huge muscle in your back that stabilizes that area. If you can't feel that muscle, the best way to engage it is to get a band, attach it to the middle of the bar, attach it to, uh, say, a dumbbell out in front of you, 
you gotta pull now with your lats, like a lat pullover, and you can start doing your deadlifts. And by the way, your lats and your, the fronts of your core directly oppose each other, so if you do that movement, your core is gonna fire on big time as well. Yeah, you guys like that with your banded uh, dead bugs. Yeah. And your hips and those, I know you do. Yeah, okay, so that is deadlifts. Let's put it all together. If you have individual questions, please come up to me, we'll take a look. We're gonna do, say, one more set each, two more sets each, um, and then we're gonna kick on to yoke, okay? Could you, could you I'm gonna do it how I normally do it, without any of like, the stuff that you just put today. Sure. And then, yeah. Sure. Give me two more. In a row? <laughs> I don't do touch and go, so. No, that's fine. Just pause it at the bottom. Do you think? <laughs> no, I like that. That was good. Okay. That was good. It's for you. Like when it comes to. Uh, um, non-strength athletes, at 60-70% something falls apart. Yeah. Strength athletes, we're talking 90% before it falls yeah. apart. So that looks good, okay. like from, from a starting spot, 100%. Yeah. Uh, but you can actually give some advice to her on how you get down properly okay. into it. Because she says that she needs to be like a bit wider, it's uncomfortable, but you actually sit down into that really, really well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you just should do it. Oh. I always thought like, oh, you round, that's like bad. Like, whereas like now I figured. Why do I think it's a misconception yeah. that other people have? Yeah, like because I was always because thought you have to like. Do that. I don't know. One. One because people think that injury risk is associated with coming forward. It's not. Two because people treat the spine as one, and they think folding here is the same injury risk as folding here. Yeah. Oh. But if if you took the spine out and you hung it from the top. Yeah. Here, it's, it's curved like this. Okay. Yeah. So like when you're here, that's actually out of your normal range. Yeah. Your normal range is here. Right? Okay. Yeah. Just just the same as your low back. Like that's what your low back looks like. Yeah. If you go here, then you're like, we're, we're not looking so that's good. Not, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's just about keeping a general okay. neutral range. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.